Hey guys, here we go into a film study, uh, and it's not going to be the full fight film study. There's a lot that goes on in this fight. Um, it was a great fight. Uh, Robert Easter did a fantastic job in this fight. Uh, the first few rounds he fought masterfully. Uh, I think he fought the last two rounds really well as well. Um, doing great, using great control, using great lead hand control. But there were some things, obviously, that he didn't do well in this fight. Um, his ability to transition his weight off of his um, off of his left leg, um, or onto his left leg, rather, uh, to slip the right hand was not very good, and it caused him to eat a lot of right hands. Um, he maintained the same t style of technique to slip the right hand, which was just get away from the jab, and rather than slip to the outside of his opponent, uh, he would just duck and try to get away from it. Uh, very Sergei Lipinets style, um, and we saw that it didn't work for Sergei Lipinets. So I'm not sure Robert Easter or his corner had anybody doing film study for him to teach him this, but um, uh, it caused him to eat a lot more right hands than he needed to. He showed that he had he was quick enough um, in the beginning of the fight um, to kind of keep Mikey, Mikey at bay, but Mikey made some adjustments, and I kind of want to talk about what those are, all the ones that led up just to the knockdown. Uh, we're not going to do the full fight breakdown, but I'll talk a little bit more about the full fight after we do the film study, but let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, so this is what we're going to be looking at right here. How did Mikey wind up in this position after basically getting shut out for the first two rounds um, and then getting the knockdown right? So um, right away, um, Easter doing a good job of not moving in a linear pattern, right? He didn't move straight back. That was one of the problems that he had uh, when fighting um, his other opponents is that he would move straight back to get away from his opponent. But as you can see here, Mikey Garcia starts to move forward with his jab, and Robert Easter takes a step off the line, really far off the line. He crosses his legs, he, he breaks a couple of the fundamental rules, but he does it in the right way, and it stops him from having to put himself um, into a position to getting hit with the right hand simply by just by moving off the right, um, moving off the line. Um, another thing that he did really well uh, is circling. Look at all the circling that he's doing. Not just moving straight, uh, straight in with his jab, but circling all around the ring, uh, really commanding it. Um, again, more jabbing. Now, this is the most important and fascinating thing that he did. I want you guys to watch his right hand. Um, he made a huge adjustment in this fight, uh, keeping his right hand forward to constantly be catching Mikey Garcia's jab um, to keep Mikey Garcia from throwing it. Uh, and it stopped Mikey Garcia, as you can see, stopped Mikey Garcia from trading jabs with him. And it stopped Mikey Garcia from, um, from setting up his right hand because he couldn't establish his jab. Now, Mikey Garcia doesn't actually land his jab when he's jabbing. He likes to throw it out straight, kind of like a hammer. You know, like straight out this way, and then pull his opponent's left hand down to come over the top with the right hand. Um, but because of the fact that Easter was catching the jab all night, he wasn't really able to do that. And look at how far forward Easter's hand is. This is really fascinating because he's catching the jab, he's catching the jab, and then when Mikey makes an adjustment here, he starts throwing it as a hook. And look at you can see Easter tried to catch the jab, and he almost gets caught with the hook. Um, now that's fascinating because that's an adjustment that Mikey starts to make that allows him to get back into the fight. But again, look at how Mikey tries to use the jab to set up the, the right hand, but Easter is still catching it. Now the one part that I don't like about that is look at how Easter is turning away after the, after the jab comes. Um, he, look at how he's not able to turn his right leg or turn his hips and turn his whole body away. His shoulder is stuck here and his, only his head is moving. Uh, and that's because his hips are locked uh, because his his left hip is not open, right? So he's not facing his opponent. His left hip is facing this way, right? And his right hip is facing this way. So when he turns, only the top half of his body is coming. His, his hips are not coming with him. So when he tries to slip the shots, he doesn't move all the way off the line uh, with his head. Again, you can see that very clearly here. The one comes out, and then the two comes out, but he can't slip to the outside of Garcia's two um, and winds up, uh, only basically rolling away from it, kind of in the Mayweather-esque style, but as we saw later in the fight, that really doesn't serve him very well uh, because Mikey Garcia just has such a great one, too. Um, again, look at how this round starts. Round two starts great for Easter, controlling him. Look at how he has both his hands out really far in front of him, and he's able to completely control Mikey Garcia and stop Mikey Garcia from... Um, from setting up any of his offense. You know, he has complete control of him, and then he's able to set up his jab and shoot his jab. And it really surprised me that Mikey Garcia wasn't able to pick up on a timing to to knock Easter out. You know, Easter 
Um, because he had that control and he was fainting, um, he did a good job of keeping Mikey Garcia to himself. You know, and not allowing him to have the, the best timing. Um, whereas if Mikey Garcia had a little more effort to explore and to faint um, without Easter being in his face. Like, look at how tight Mikey Garcia's guard is right now. Um, he, he's here. He's fainting. He's rolling. He's slipping. He's doing stuff. But his hands are close to his face. And it doesn't allow him to counter as well as he might if he had the, the range and the, the control of the space that Easter has at the moment. Now, this is the round that Easter starts to lose that control as we see um, Easter still doing a good job. And look at how he probes here. I love this when he takes this step, right? So part of that timing that he has when he steps with his jab is off of his lead foot. That's going to come into play very shortly. But as he steps forward when he's not punching, look at how he controls Mikey and keeps him on the outside. You know, Easter showed a lot of growth in this fight. Maybe Steve, um, maybe Mr. Cunningham, his trainer, did a lot better job with him than I thought he was going to be able to. Because um, I, you know, I don't... We're not going to get into that. But moving on, moving on. Um, as you can see, but one thing that I don't like is when he pulls back straight back like this, you can see that, and like this, he's he's not slipping or rolling punches, and look at how his weight, his hips don't come with him, he's only moving his upper body, um, and that's actually part of the reason why he gets knocked down in the first place, but look at the adjustment that Mikey's making, rather than shooting the jab and continuing to jab with Easter and lose that battle, uh, because we all know Mikey's not only a slow starter, but but Mikey also, when you hit him, it resets him, you know. So it's a good idea to trade jabs with Mikey Garcia. He'll never follow up on a one-two if you catch him with your jab as well. I've never seen it, and I've done tons of film study on Mikey Garcia. But um, instead of shooting the jab, Easter tries to catch the jab, and Mikey Garcia is coming in with the hook instead, and it's making... Easter at the end of the second round lose the control that he had on on Mikey Garcia as you see he goes to the body with the jab and Mikey Garcia starts countering him not with the jab as well but with the left hook uh, and it stops notice how it stops Easter from keeping his right hand out there and he stops feeling as comfortable all of a sudden this is the same clip right this is the same clip it stops uh, Easter from feeling comfortable controlling that lead hand of Mikey Garcia and unfortunately for Easter he doesn't use as much of the probing style as he needs to. He was looking to control with his backhand. Um, and, you know, nothing wrong with that, right? He was It was working very well for the first um, round and a half, but Mikey Garcia making an adjustment, and now Easter doesn't know whether it's going to be a jab or it's going to be a hook. And because he can't predict this and he's not using his lead hand to control Mikey as well as he needs to, Mikey Garcia is able to, boom, start setting up his first right hand and land that shot. Uh, beautiful shot from Mikey. Uh, and now look at Easter's guard. Now look at how his guard, he's here. His his lead hand is close to his body. His right hand is much closer to his chin instead of out there. Uh, and he has he's losing the control that he had over Mikey Garcia. Um, and as you can see, Mikey Garcia wading in with that left hook. Uh, and then Easter showing that same problem where he lets his hips get away from him and he rolls away from the shot but he doesn't bring his hips with him he doesn't transfer his weight and it leads to awkward transitions out of it and again Mikey Garcia is starting to really lead in and and um, find the timing for that jab um, and his right hand here now this is the part where Mikey Garcia completely takes away all the control that Easter had um, he talked about it in the post fight how his control um, or his timing of, of Easter started to really pick up, and it was in the third round. And what I want you guys to watch right now is watch as Easter steps on his front foot, right? As he steps front, boom. It's exactly the same timing that we talked about in the pre-fight buildup, um, except that Mikey Garcia, for some reason, doesn't ever throw his right hand over the top of it as a lead right hand like I thought he would, like he did against Lipinets. Uh What he does is he just starts catching Easter's jab and catching Easter's probes. So, right, touching his glove, touching his glove. Right? And every time Easter steps forward, Mikey Garcia's right glove goes out and catches Easter's glove as well. Um, and he starts catching it, and, well, he eats that jab right there. But um, uh, as you can see, he's battling, you know, battling for lead hand dominance, although he's not using his lead hand to do it um, because of Easter's, um, Easter's uh, reach advantage, you know, probably. Who knows what the real reason is, but as you can see, um, we'll just watch that clip again from the beginning of the third round, touching the glove, and this is where Easter, again, this is where Easter loses all his control, as you can see it's on that front timing, boom, steps forward, right, 
and Mikey Garcia is able to pick up on it. And by the end of the round, Mikey Garcia has taken away all of the control that Easter has. Watch Again, watch Easter step forward. Jab comes out. Jab comes out. Jab comes out. Right? And then he's able to shoot jabs and punch off of it, but he loses all the control that he has. And we can see he's, he's about to step forward here. And then Mikey Garcia, as Easter is stepping forward and about to probe, Mikey Garcia attacks and comes in. <laughs> comes in with his 1 2, his patented 1 2, um, and lands it right on Easter's chin. Um, and they say that it was the, the left hook that really knocked him down. But we all know that it was the right hand that caught him and that really put him into, into danger. But as you can see, it's on that same timing, um, and Mikey Garcia picks up on the timing. Um, for all the things that are wrong with Mikey Garcia's offense and Mikey Garcia's um, skills, uh, timing, he has some of the best timing in all of boxing. He, he's a really, um, a really experienced fighter, and that's just something that you have when you fight you know, 40 professional fights. You just pick up on these things and it just becomes your second nature. Um, and Mikey Garcia after this uh, has Robert Easter's timing and Robert Easter starts, you know, staying a little tighter for the rest of the fight and has a very difficult time figuring out how how to engage Mikey Garcia in a positive way, in a way that's going to um, allow him to land offense without... Um, without inciting offense from Mikey, or rather, without without walking into the layer of defense that Mikey is choosing to implore. Um, and um, as you can see, although I was wrong in my official prediction about the, the right hand being the reason um, why Mikey Garcia wins, obviously he lands it a number of times, off of that, off of that timing, or off of that, you know, just that one-two, and Easter's inability to slip away from it, um, it was really his ability to time him and start landing his jab that um, that allowed him to to win this fight and to take away all the control that Easter had. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter and. Um, I also got a Facebook page like that, like my videos, check them out, share them if you like them. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, and as far as Easter, um, I think Easter gave out a, a, a brilliant performance. Um, I think this was the kind of performance, now the Mikey Garcia fans, they're not going to like this part. Um, but this was the kind of performance that really showed kind of how limited Mikey was. You know, it was, it was a dominant-ish performance, you know, against an undefeated fighter. But... We really got to see how limited Mikey's offense really was, as he wasn't really able to do anything to Easter. He wasn't fainting very well. He wasn't probing really, really well. He couldn't get Easter out of position very often, um, except for on that one timing. Um, so what's going to happen when he fights a fighter who knows how to take those timings away or set traps on those kinds of timings? You know, like we saw with Shabransky versus Kovalev, how Shabransky was timing Kovalev on that, and Kovalev said, oh, I can make traps for this. You know, like Golovkin, who makes traps on timing, and then his opponents make traps for his traps, and then he traps their traps, you know, trapception. But um, anyway, um, I think that this fight, I think Mikey Garcia continues to show how limited he can be sometimes um, in fighting fighters, you know, a fighter that can't get away from his right hand. If Easter could have gotten away from his right hand, if Easter had just a little bit more technique for slipping the right hand, I think he could have easily beaten Mikey Garcia, easily beaten him and shown him how, you know, how limited he is in some of those facets. Um, as far as fighting Spence, if he couldn't put, if he couldn't put Robert Easter out you know, at 135 pounds, how's he going to compete with an 180-pound Errol Spence? You know, that is a big boy. Man, Spence is a huge fighter. So I'm just not super sure that that's a good idea for Mikey. I think he should keep calling him out um, and, um, you know, getting people to say, Mikey Garcia, Mikey Garcia, and then, you know, fight someone else. You know, maybe he can get the fight with um, uh, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter winner. Um, <coughs> Sean Porter. <coughs> anyway, let me know what you guys think.